this is Helen for Tabby, back again to talk about the negative cards. And in this video, I want to do it a little bit differently. Instead of looking at just one card in particular, let's look at all of the fives in the minor arcana, because on the face of it, they all seem kind of rough going. After the stability of the fours and before the celebration of the sixes, we have the instability and the loss of the fives, where we encounter conflict and change. Let's start by taking a brief look at the difficult aspects of these cards. So the five of wands, keywords are um, conflict, um, disagreements, uh, competition, diversity. This card can represent an external or internal conflict. In external conflict, there could be competition, you could be competing with other people who are just as competent and ambitious as you are for something, uh, which could be a blow to your pride. In internal conflict, you could be in a situation where um, you have a lot of ideas about how to approach a certain situation and there's perhaps none of them seem easy. Um, and none of them seem the obvious choice, so there can be a lot of struggle, internal struggle. Uh, in the Five of Swords, we have uh, conflict again, but also defeat. Uh, as a Swords card, this one deals with our thoughts, and there could be arguments, we could be goaded into a fight. Even if you win an argument, you could be left counting the cost. I find uh, this card more than any represents the, the internet comments, you know, don't read the comments. Um, because in online arguments, we sometimes find that people descend into um, pointless and painful debates where they're arguing past each other in an attempt to score a point. And in the end, nobody really wins. Um, in the Five of Cups, we have um, uh, regret, loss and grief. Um, it's quite an emo emotionally intense card. It talks of really difficult emotions. Um, we see three cups are spilt and that liquid can't be unspilt. There can be feelings of disappointment and despair, as we can see from the, the dark cloak uh, on the figure. And the five of pentacles. Um, so this is a card of poverty. It can be financial poverty or sometimes a spiritual poverty. There could be unexpected expenses, um, or we could be left feeling out in the cold, again, either financially or in a community sense. Um, so for some help in recontextualizing these cards, let's take a little look at Kabbalah. On the Tree of Life, the fives reside in Gevura, which is severity. Um, here introduces the concept of limits or boundaries. What is finite? If we were to experience the infinite expansion of the four, um, our existence would have no real meaning. It's coming up against these limitations that gives us an understanding of who we are, what our strengths are, and perhaps where we need to develop. Dealing with these circumstances humbles and matures us. Suffering can be a teacher, although it can take time for the lesson to shine through. It doesn't sound so optimistic, Okay, think about the numerology. These are number five, not ten. So you're only part way through the story. It's not the end. The difficult times make the later joyful ones that much more sweeter. So with this in mind, let's take another look at each of these cards. For the five of swords, uh, sorry, the five of wands, um, in competition, we gain an understanding of our capabilities and how these measure up against others. If you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. You have a chance to prove yourself and there are no paper champions here. Diversity of thought can also refine ideas. In times of internal conflict, you have an opportunity to course correct if, say, you're not living the life you had dreamed. I feel the fire in this card is a purifying one. And in the Five of Swords, um, a lot of the cards in the Suit of Swords talk about an individual's perceptions. But in the Five of Swords, we are acutely aware of other people's perceptions, other people's views. They come into sharp focus. This is where we have to question whether winning an argument at any cost is worth it. This card reminds me of the advice slash warning. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? How do we learn to communicate in a way that is empathetic 
How can we be mindful that we can cut others deeply with our words? Sometimes we learn that lesson the hard way. If you've ever looked back on things you've said and cringed, it's actually a good sign because you've grown. Sometimes you need to just walk away from conflict and that is a sign that you have considered the consequences, maybe from past experience, and how this compares to your self-worth and your values. Um, the Five of Cups. Well, this card talks about loss. It's not the whole story. For instance, when this card talks about a bereavement, the grief is an expression of love. Someone once said that grief is love with nowhere to go. I'm not sure exactly how much I agree with that because there are many people who use their grief to inspire acts of kindness and compassion. The loss in this card is not 100%. And there's always something that remains and that's what we can carry forward. Heavy emotions like disappointment, grief and regret can be catalysts for important and necessary changes in our lives. We realise what is true and what is precious. And the Five of Pentacles. So I feel that there's a sense of defiance in this card. It signifies persistence in the face of adversity. This can represent sticking together no matter what, like the two figures we can see. In some religions, those who take in holy vows of poverty and chastity would renounce earthly pleasures in order to develop spiritually. Coming after the Four of Pentacles, where an individual may identify with a material habit, such as um, drinking or gambling, they might feel lost without this thing they used to strongly identify with. But actually, letting go is liberating in the long run. They're in the process of recreating their idea of themselves. And that process involves sacrifice and struggle, but it leads to a more authentic life you find out what is truly important. So to bring it back to Kabbalah, just to wrap up, let's look at two of the um, 22 paths that connect the um, Sephiroth. Now, now from Sephira number four to number five, um, we actually travel across justice. Um, this shows that there is um, a necessary balance being restored. Uh, justice is impartial and objective. It doesn't really care about your feelings, unfortunately. Um, it may acknowledge them, but the universal balance serves a higher purpose. Leaving Gavura towards the next Sephira, Tiferet, we travel along strength. This is what you gain from the experiences of the five. Pride in not compromising your values, a greater understanding of yourself, your power and your place in this world, and also what matters. What we had previously seen as stable in the fours is deconstructed and from this there is a chance to build something stronger.